into first take, I just want to mention quickly for our Dana White conversation that the California Legislative Women's Caucus, we did reach out to them for comment. We have not heard back yet. And they were who had called for Dana White's job, so I wanted to make sure to make mention of that. And we also reached out to numerous ladies within the walls of ESPN to invite them on to discuss it, but they were not available this morning. Well, yep. I hope I held it down in the meantime. Yes, you did. Okay. Now, we're going out to Vegas because we have some games this weekend. So, Joe Fortenbaugh, you're here to lighten the mood for us. Let's go here. Joe, we're going to start with Dallas-Tampa Bay. Tell me, what's the play, sir? Stephen A., I've always felt you and I make a very good team. And I yes. know you like to comment on the Cowboys from time to time. Okay. So, I'm going to leave the winner of this game to you. And I'm going to pick the total under 45 and a half points. Tampa Bay's offense is not what people think when they think Tom Brady. 25th in scoring this year, and in 17 games this season, they've scored 30 or more points two times. Now, they can play defense, and given all the turnovers we've seen from Dak Prescott as of late, I do not see Dallas putting up a big number here, so we're going under 45 and a half Monday night on ESPN. I completely agree with you. I think that Tampa Bay's defense is going to show up, and they're going to neutralize Dallas to some degree, but Tampa Bay's offense hasn't been great all year long, and because of that reality, I definitely see it being under 45 points for this game. I'm with you, Joe Ford. Bar, way to start off. I'm very, very proud of you. You usually don't get it right first go round, but you did that. On a high note, unanimous decision. Let's go. San Francisco, the heavy favorite at home against Seattle, giving nine and a half points, Joe. Do they cover? Incredible backhanded compliment there. Incredible. That's why he's the master. <laughs> this is the best bet of the weekend. As long as it's less than 10, play the San Francisco 49ers. Seattle was a really nice story during the regular season, but it ain't the regular season anymore, and this is a monster step up in class. Seattle closed the year going 3-5. and five. They, they won three games, two against the Rams, one against the Jets. This Niners team is an absolute wagon. They've won 10 straight. They've won those 10 straight by an average of 16 points per game. And along with Philadelphia, they're one of only two teams in the NFL that ranks in the top five in both offensive yards per play and defensive yards per play. They house Seattle twice this season. I see them working them over Saturday. I totally agree with him there as well. Listen, I have. I think Geno Smith has had a good year. He's thrown for over 4,000 yards. Give credit where credit is due. But this is the postseason right now. You're going up against an elite defense. There's been some tailing off on the part of the Seattle Seahawks as the we as the regular season has waned. I think they come up and arrives. This is the playoffs. This is big time. San Francisco is on a mission. I think they deal with Seattle handily. The only thing Seattle's got going for itself is just playing with house money. They've got nothing to lose because nobody expects them to do anything in this matchup. Joe, can you still hear us? I was seeing some hand signals happening. Are you good? I just want to make sure. He can't hear us. I don't think he can hear us. Damn it. So game number Give three, us. we're going to take a good long look at the okay. New York Giants take catching over. three against the Minnesota Vikings. The way I see it in this matchup, these two just got together a few weeks ago in Minnesota. Giants didn't play very well. Minus two in turnover differential and three of 11 on third down. And yet they only lost by three points in that matchup. They basically got two weeks to get ready for this game because they rested the starters last week against Philadelphia. Coming into this matchup, they should be able to run the ball. They ran all over Minnesota's defense in that first matchup, and they should do it again. And if you can run the ball successfully against Minnesota, you're going to be able to keep Kirk Cousins and Justin Jefferson on the sideline in that matchup, and you should be able to keep this one tight. I like Big Blue plus the three. Can I just say something? You know why you should really trust Joe? Because look at what a pro he is. He can't even hear what we're saying. He knew exactly where we were going next. He just right. took over, gave us the analysis right. on the segment. I mean, Joe's well, the man. Well, first of all, he's learned from the best. He used to work with me on Stephen A's world, so we understand where he gets the great. How does it the always bottom line, come back The to bottom you? line is because that's the way it is. The bottom line is this, though. I'm going to say he's wrong. I hope he's right, but I'm going to say he's wrong. I love my man Dable, but in the end, what I'm thinking along the lines is this. I think the Giants are going to lose this game 30 to 24. All right. Fair enough. All right. We're going to roll on this one. Joe, thank you so much. We'll talk to you next week, and we'll get those tech issues straightened out. Have a fabulous week and enjoy the games. Plus, stick around to find out what got Micah Parsons so fired up on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> to, be, to be quite I frank had to, I had with to get you. it in while I could, Key. I had to get it in while I could. Well, I mean, we both know that the Miami Dolphins are a much better team if Tua was healthy and playing. They displayed that throughout most of the season. Um, however... That's not the case right now. I think the first and foremost, they got to worry about his health. Amber, do you think that he should be on the 
Miami Dolphins roster next year? Because me personally, I don't. I'd like to see Stephen Ross pay the contract out and, you know, Tua decide to do something else different in his life. Here's my only thing with that, Key. I'm really uncomfortable telling a grown man how he needs to handle his life, particularly I when I myself, you know, I've never been faced with that opportunity. I've never been faced with the millions and millions of dollars of fame and all the perks that come with playing professional football. So telling somebody to give all that up, I don't feel like that that should be up to me by any means. I do also think, though, with the Miami Dolphins, that they've got a public relations problem when it comes to Tua. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong. We obviously are all very concerned about his long-term health. And I think we saw with DeMar Hamlin that there are things that are bigger than football. And that was really, really refreshing, frankly, seeing that, that we do care about the humans playing this game. But when it comes to Tua, the narrative around Tua specifically, everyone calling for him to give up this game, it's a little strange to me because we don't hear the same thing about many other players in the National Football League who also suffer multiple concussions every season. Again, I'm not saying whether that's right or wrong, but I do think that the Dolphins have a durability concern when it comes to Tua, but I think they have just as big of a public relations concern because for whatever reason, the narrative has focused in on this particular player. I, I, don't, I, I don't mean to harp on you, Max, but I did hear at the top of the hour, you were saying you were being fairly critical, like a lot of people, of how Mike McDaniel handled the Tua situation back in September. But you said a coach like Mike Tomlin wouldn't have handled it the same way. And Kenny Pickett has suffered multiple concussions this season. Not only did the Steelers handle it the same way, the Steelers put him back out there to play in the same game. He cleared concussion protocol, went back out there, played. He had to take himself out of the game. For some reason, no criticism of how the Steelers Ever. handled that situation, and no one's calling for Kenny Pickett to retire. So it's something with Tua and with the Dolphins. And I'm, again, I'm not saying whether that's right or wrong. I do think that that's a big problem moving forward, though, for the Dolphins to consider beyond just Tua's health is how much everyone's going to be holding their breath watching Tua play football for forevermore. And I think that that's, you know, it's certainly a concern. Amber, you know what? hold on, hold on, Key, because Jay wants to get in, but I got to respond because, Amber, you brought up a, a point I made about how there's a difference. Um, in boxing, you can get a standing eight count, may have been a concussive event, and you can continue fighting, right? But if you are knocked out, there's a 30-day wait period. Like, if, you've, if it's come to an end, you have to be removed from the contest. Um, there is, you're right, actually, logically, that if you're concussed, you know, who cares if you can keep going? Maybe you should just be removed from the game, right? Period. But there is a big difference between this player suffered multiple concussions in the same year you continue to play him, and this person clearly had a neurological event where he couldn't control his legs, and four days later, upon reflection and everything, you got to look at it, the whole thing, you could see what it was, you put him back in the game. I'm not saying this in retrospect. I said it at the time. Not a good idea because I see what happens when you have, like, oftentimes you will get concussed again and then it's an issue. That's my criticism. Well, yeah, it, Jay. Jay, get, right, and I'm Jay certainly was. not defending that action. And, I mean, technically they did follow protocol. Technically he was not diagnosed with a concussion. Obviously we know the NFL changed their protocols after that event, as they should have, because we all saw what was happening. That's why you guys have a bunch of people in your mentions, oh, he's only been diagnosed with two concussions. Well, that's true. He was only diagnosed with two this season. I think we all saw three happen. Amber, I, I, I did want to ask you, understanding uh, the PR challenge that the Dolphins may have with Tua moving forward, understanding the sensitivities around having three concussions in one calendar year, um, you know, understanding also that uh, a quarterback in Jimmy G, who probably won't be in San Francisco anymore, a place where Mike McDaniel comes from, uh, how interesting or feasible of a possibility is that for the Dolphins to go after a guy like Jimmy G? I like that fit schematically. I don't like that fit from a durability perspective. Now, could you make Jimmy Garoppolo the starter and two of the backup? But then you kind of find yourself in a situation like the Dolphins are currently in, where Teddy Bridgewater clearly has durability concerns as well, different than two of durability concerns. But having a durability concern quarterback back up a durability concerning starter, then that can be problematic because you can't have your whole quarterback room injured at the same time. And so that would be my concern with Jimmy Garoppolo on this roster. I like it, though, from a Mike McDaniel perspective and that relationship that you mentioned. I would imagine he'll be pretty expensive, so certainly another consideration, but I don't think Tua is going to get his extension. I do think Tua 
is going to stay on the Dolphins roster next season. I just don't think you hand him that extension. I think you watch Burrow get paid out of the same draft, Herbert get paid out of the same draft. You don't have to hand her, uh, her, uh, Chungaloa that extension yet. We saw it with the Giants. Take your time. Daniel Jones, they could even pick up his